An ampassant checkmate is basically impossible. You want to trap your opponent's king, but without getting a stalemate, so you literally cannot make any mistakes. But you also can't have your opponent resign, run out of time, or disconnect. This checkmate requires you and your opponent's pieces to be in the perfect position at the perfect time, which is why almost nobody in the world has gotten this before. So today, will I be able to get the rarest and most difficult checkmate in the world? All right, first game of the challenge. If I get it in this first game, I will literally gift everyone watching this a free Tesla Cybertruck. So I did ask you guys how long you thought it would take me to get this checkmate, and almost everyone voted for 12 plus hours. I really hope it isn't that long, but we'll see. And while I play this first game, if you thought me getting the castle checkmate was hard, this one would end up being at least 10 times more difficult. Okay, we win, but I actually have like no idea what the strategy here is. Like, do I just try to attack his king the entire game or what? No, it's not even possible to get an Ampassant now, although like the pawns are messed up. Oh my goodness gracious, did I seriously blunder my queen like that? Just 10 minutes into this challenge, I was already a little depressed, because I didn't have any idea of what an ampassant checkmate was even supposed to look like. So after two more games where nothing really happened, I decided to do some scientific research on this ampassant checkmate. Okay, you know what? I gotta see what this checkmate actually looks like in real life. I literally have no idea what I'm doing right now. Okay, so I guess you just gotta kinda win all your opponent's pieces like right in the opening, trap their king on the side of the board, then bring your bishop. Okay, so they have to block with their pawn, then ampassant. Okay, okay, this might be doable actually. And while this plan was easy in theory, doing it in a real game was a whole different story. Wait, does this bishop sacrifice even work? Oh, his knight defends his queen. Okay, we're down six points of material in the first seven moves of the game. Let's not do that. But after this embarrassing moment, in just the next game, this happened. Okay, yeah, so we can take this pawn and his king is exposed now. Okay, his king is trapped over here, but what do we do? No, I don't want to trade queens. No, the pawns are messed up. <laughs> Even though I was sad I just wasted this opportunity, this was actually really good. Only about an hour into the challenge, I had gotten this promising position. I just didn't know what to do with it. Next time that happened though, I was confident I could do much better. Okay, this might be good. This guy's king is threatened a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Why am I so bad at this game? Okay, we're winning by a good amount. We just need the king to be trapped. No! <laughs> I had six seconds, what, what am I supposed to do here? I was winning most of these games and getting good positions. The only problem was I didn't have much chance to think with the time. No, don't lose on time. Come on, just move something. Bruh. I was playing two minute bullet games with a one second increment so I could just play more, but I decided to switch to a somewhat longer time control so these time issues wouldn't happen. All right, we're switching to three minute blitz games, so hopefully that makes things easier. Okay, so I texted my 2500 rated friend Nyarjar from the last video, and I asked him how long he thought it would take me to get the opposite checkmate, and he said a long time, I would need to play somebody really, really bad over and over again. Now, I feel like that's kind of cheating though, like playing someone low rated is probably fine, but I don't know about like continuously rematching them over and over. Also, why am I losing my six points here? All right, I gotta actually focus on these games. And after losing that game, I came up with a strategy to get this checkmate that seemed like it would work very well. I would take all my opponent's major pieces, then block one of their pawns from moving. Then all I would need to do is trap their king behind their pawn. And then when they move that piece, I would get an ampassant checkmate. Now this was actually a very good plan, but there was just one huge problem. Okay, he resigns. Can we just like play the game and not resign though? Like, is this possible to do? Okay, this might actually be it. I just gotta focus here. There's plenty of pawns, this is good. Yes, okay, now we just gotta figure out how to trap his king. I have plenty of time here. No, oh my, why are you such a In nearly every game, once I got an advantage by taking a free piece, my opponent would almost immediately resign. Okay, really dude? How do I make it so that uh, like my opponent doesn't just immediately resign the game? This new problem of my opponent's instantaneously resigning was now the only thing stopping me from getting this opposite checkmate. I had practically figured out a foolproof strategy of setting up this checkmate, so all I had to do now was get lucky with an opponent. Well, that's a free queen there. I know he wants to resign. I can feel it within my soul. Okay, maybe if I just ask him, please don't resign. Okay, he doesn't resign. This is a good sign. All right, well, it was worth a shot, I guess. I just took your bishop. What, we're three moves into the game and you resign? Guys, if you're ever playing against me, just don't resign, okay? I'm probably just trying to get a weird achievement. And even though this resignation problem was a big issue, I would still get games like this. Okay, I have a good feeling about this position. I mean, look how exposed this king is there. Let's bring the knight in here. <laughs> Fumbling that position so hard was definitely a level nine emotional damage moment, but I knew I had made a lot of progress. I knew my checkmate plan would work. All I needed to do was find an opponent who wouldn't resign the game, allowing me to get this ampassant win. And this is where 
nowhere, Vlad 77k appears. At this point, I had gone back to bullet games because I figured if my opponents were losing material, they might just stay in the game and try to win on time. That's what I hoped at least. Yay, free pawn. The beginning of this game went very well, and the enemy king was already exposed to the elements. All I needed to do was somehow cover the g7 and g8 square with my pieces, and if my opponent moved his pawn forward two spaces, this would be an opus on checkmate. And then as I was thinking of a plan to cover these squares... No, that's so close. There's just these two squares I need to cover. At this point, I had been playing for around six and a half hours straight. It was 10 o'clock at night, and this made me make a somewhat suspect decision. All right, you know what? I'm, I'm just gonna do it. I'm bullying low-rated people on the uh, open challenges area. Now, the open challenge area is a place where you can play literally anyone, whether they're rated 2,500 or 400. Almost immediately, I knew this is how I would get this checkmate. The first person I played on here let me get up by 12 points of material until... Wait, this actually might be it, though. I just need to trap the king. Even though this person resigned, I knew it was just a matter of time before I found the right player. Because for some reason, 99.9% .9 of low elo players just don't resign games. And this was perfect for me. Okay, why am I doing so bad here? Bro, how am I losing this? Are you joking me? Now the only problem was, after almost 7 hours straight of playing chess, my brain's ability to play well was quickly diminishing. Are you serious? My brother, my brother in Christ, what are you doing? This had stopped being fun a long time ago, and now was just a struggle. But all it would take was just one game for it to all be over. Okay, as long as this pawn doesn't move, I think I'm just gonna keep my rook there, then we'll be good. Okay, how do we get the king over there now? Let's just promote to a rook so we don't accidentally stalemate. All I needed to do now was position my rook behind my pawn, remove my other rook, and the opposite would be there. I just needed to figure out a way to cover these squares. Come on, this has to be it, please. Okay, I gotta cover here. I can go there. There, there. No! Oh, <laughs> why? Why? Why do you do that? Just allow it, man. Just allow it to happen. A few games later, it happened again. Match after match, I just kept telling myself it will only take one game. One game was all it would take for me to be finished. I was closer now than ever. Then, at 12:03 a.m., I loaded into this chess game. The opening went as low-rated openings do. My opponent blunders his queen because he thought he had checkmate. I trapped this pawn. Now all that was left was to trap the king without my opponent resigning. I promote to another queen. Maneuver the king into the perfect position. My my plan is to play queen e2, completely trapping the opponent's king and forcing them to move their pawn where my pawn is waiting to en passant and checkmate. I am 110% locked in here. And then, this happens. My microphone is so sad it doesn't work and breaks down. But basically, I had mouse lips. In probably the most important move of my life, one move away from a nearly certain victory, I had failed. Analyzing the game afterwards, I confirmed that this would have been an en passant checkmate, but I couldn't give up here. As my good friend always says, the hardest choices require the strongest wills. I wouldn't quit when I was this close to victory, so I kept playing until I got this game. My opponent sacrifices the bishop in the opening, then their queen right after. I move my pawn into perfect position, planning on empassanting their h7 pawn. They move their rook back, effectively trapping their own king. I just move my queen up, planning on bringing it into the attack. And then, this happens. After playing chess straight for almost seven and a half hours, I had done it. Everyone thought it would take over 12 hours, a week even, but I had finally done it. So for the brain damage and emotional toll this took on me, I blame every single person who left one of these comments. Alright, here's the official time it took me, right there. 7 hours, 24 minutes, 54 seconds. This was 100% not worth it, do not do this. It's literally 12.32am right now. This is not, this is not fun. 